So the village of Nutak in western Alaska is um, probably a good example of many unfortunate communities that are suffering from erosion, uh, degrading permafrost, uh, changing water tables, and Nutak is uh, gradually falling into the ocean. Nutak in particular has been blessed with an option to relocate fairly close by to a volcanic island. And so uh, Nelson Island and the site of Murtarvik um, are underlain by volcanic rock, so it's very stable. So this summer, starting in June, we are looking at having these 13 homes completed uh, with occupancy by fall. Yeah. At this point, you can go all the way across the top if you want. My name is Clint Shireman. I work with Kanoff Insulation as a training manager. We, we came up here this week to um, work with uh, local contractors um, and builders and then also um, the contractors in the uh, uh, Murdovic project uh, to make sure that the insulation install goes well. Uh, and answer all the questions ahead of time before they get out in the field and run into issues. So this is uh, a generic uh, net and blow wall. Um, so we have a, a mesh insulation uh, fabric um, that we staple up um, and then we punch a hole in it and we blow loose fill insulation that uh, the same stuff that goes in your attic we put into um, the wall. Um, so anywhere where um, the air can travel uh, it will also take the insulation with it. So if there's a wire or a pipe, if air can get around it, then it takes insulation with it and you fill the entire cavity with air pressure. Um, and it's a really high R value uh, for wall systems. Um, it's 4.2 per inch, so in this 12 inch wall we get about an R49. It fills the entire cavity. If there's anywhere where air can travel, then, then the insulation will travel there too. So. going to hang a piece of fabric up between these uh, as a baffle so we have a defined area that we can blow. Um, otherwise if we try to blow this whole wall, a bunch of material is going to come out between the studs here um, and we won't, it'll be really hard to get the density that we want. It'll be hard to pack in because it's all blowing out as well. So. On a standard wall, dimensionally framed, it's not a 12 inch wall or a double stud wall or a Larson truss or a mono truss like it's being used you wouldn't need to put the baffles in because you have this on every stud bay that you're filling. But when we have connecting stud bays like this, and you tried to fill from here to here, you'd be there for hours because you can't get that density in quick enough, quickly enough. So he's just baffling so we can do small sections at a time. You guys want to try it? He's a master <laughs> Look at that. Uh, we use pneumatic staplers because they're fast. Uh, one inch apart keeps the material from blowing onto the surface of the face of the stud. Drywallers don't like that because it'll, it'll pack in between staples that are too far apart and the drywaller can't get a tight contact with the face of the stud. Sure. Okay. Because I got plenty here. When you put that net up, try and keep it to the top of the plate at the seam of the plywood. So and we'll, um, hang on, let me uh, pull a little extra over on the end to make sure that we have enough. Go ahead. Take your corner first, then we'll get this one. Line it up. So you're over the top just here. That's fine. That looks great, actually. So top corners at least, and then bottom, middle. So what, what a lot of guys do is they do the top, and then they do the first. No, the first one, they just go up the center. Yeah. For a couple, couple of feet, and then you can come back off the ladder. I would do the ladder anyway. 
it's at least a two-man job. You need to have one person feeding material into the hopper of the machine, and you need to have one person installing. The times are in here. You can see that these are really rubber. They're not metal. And all they do is start your first breakup of the material. Then it goes down through the bottom of the hopper. And the adjustment is the gate, which is right here. I don't have it all the way open. I'm going to open it up a little bit more. So this gate is a feed gate and it adjusts an opening in the bottom of the hopper, closed all the way or open all the way or incremental, incremental adjustments along it. And you play with it after you're, you know, as you're figuring out how your machine works. So I want to, going to open this up a little bit more because I want more material in than we, than we filled up in yesterday. This has a dual blower in it, as does that crindle. Uh, you can see it if you step around here. There are two blower motors right here, and you want both of those blower motors on. This is a very simple controlled machine. This is your agitator, which is those tines right in there. That's set to on. Your blower switch is on. This is your blower control speed, how fast you want your air, how much volume of air you want. We did this with 150 feet of hose, which is the recommended length of hose to use as it circulates through the hose. We do not want to see this. That means worn hose. <coughs> it spirals through the hose. We're not conditioning the material the way we want it to be. Okay, who's first? With, with bigger cavities, it can be a little more tedious to fill um, just because there's so much volume. Um, and you know, using small DIY machines like we have here, it's going to take a little bit more time. Um, but we can still hit the density. The target density is 1.8. Um, we had 2.3 right here, um, so we clearly hit density. Um, we went a little over on some of them, but um, we were still where we needed to be for our value. We like to check cavities. We like to check the fifth, fourth or fifth cavity from the first time you go in to install. You can check where you're at. You can make some adjustments on your machines. And then from there, you would do about every 800 to 1200 square feet, you do another density check. So 22,000 to uh, 2,200 square foot house, you might do it three times in an entire house. And once you check your densities, you mark your density on here, the date that you did it, and maybe some initials. Put a patch back over this, blow more insulation in, and go on to your next cavity. So first, first what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get a measurement from the top down, anywhere within a comfortable area to take something out, okay? So it doesn't matter what your dimension is here. So now all we need is a straight edge. And the bottom, do the same thing. Again, if I were doing this for the first few times I was doing it, I would check my densities a little more often than 800 to 1200 square feet. Do the one in, the, in your first four, fourth or fifth cavity, and then maybe 500 square feet after that, and then maybe 500 square feet after that. So maybe in a larger home, but you might have four or five density checks where normally you might only have two or three. Okay. You got it up in there? What do you think? So two, oh, whoa. So one, Minus point two. Three. Yeah, so two, right? Yeah. 2.29, yeah. 2. we'll call it two pounds? Yeah. So, cool. Pretty Price good. Right rules, yeah. Cool. <laughs> you can see that they both stay in place even taking the netting off. They do, you have to actually take the material out. You can see it even just stays up there like that, even though it's not properly packed. Um, so it's a great system. It resists air a little better than bats. Um, it takes a little longer to install, but the advantage is that there are no voids in the system when done properly. So when you're working around pipes, wires, or any other obstruction in the cavities, uh, you're gonna get a greater fill. I've not done the balloon insulation. That's that was my main focus coming here was was to get trained up on that. And these guys were extremely helpful, and and uh, I think they covered everything we need to know. I've lived in the bush and worked in the bush a lot. And I think 
They're, they're simplifying everything, and that's that goes a long ways in remote villages in the Arctic. So. And then